What's up guys, today I want to talk to you about AWS Lambdas and why they're so popular in the cloud ecosystem. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what a Lambda function is, how it works, why they've exploded in popularity, and some of their newer features. So let's jump right into it and talk about what a Lambda function is. At its most basic level, AWS Lambda is a product that allows you to run functions on demand without having to worry about or manage the underlying servers. Traditionally, when you want to host an application or run some kind of job, you need an underlying machine to run that code and have to worry about setup, maintenance, and everything else that comes along with it. With Lambdas, this is not the case. You simply create a Lambda function instance, upload some code that you've written, and you're able to run it on the cloud. This is a very powerful paradigm that simplifies much of the complexity of hosting an application. So secondly, Lambda support many different languages and runtime environments, and some of them include Python, Java, C Sharp, Go, Ruby, JavaScript, and many more. So you're free to pick your language of choice when developing your Lambda function. Third, like I was alluding to before, you can use Lambdas for ad hoc tasks such as maintenance jobs, database backups, or build completely serverless high throughput applications. And for those high throughput applications, scaling is automatically handled for you to ensure high availability and low latency. So for instance, if your application suddenly gets very popular, Lambda will scale it up so that it can handle more concurrent invocations of your function and deliver an optimal performance to each of your customers. One of the main reasons I love Lambda so much is that they're very cost effective. You pay per use, and that's great for applications that have periods of high usage, typically during the day, followed by periods of low or near zero usage, typically at night. So the amount you pay is a function of the number of invocations, the duration of each invocation, and the amount of memory you provision for your function. As an example, if you run a function 30 million times at 128 megabytes of memory provisioned, and each one lasts an average of 200 milliseconds, you will only pay $5.83. Contrast that with having to buy hardware and host a server, Lambda functions are insanely cost effective and fairly priced. Another great reason to use Lambdas is that they come with built-in metrics and graphs through AWS CloudWatch. This includes critical metrics such as latency, errors, invocation count, and many, many more. Integrating these metrics with CloudWatch alarms means that you can be confident in hosting mission critical applications, as well as having the mechanisms to detect and respond to issues. So now that we know what Lambda functions are, let's move on to how Lambda functions work internally. So how Lambda works. So it starts with you as the user, you go to the AWS console and you upload some code for your application. What you in turn receive is an ARN, which stands for an Amazon resource name, which is a unique identifier for your particular Lambda application. Followed by that, you now have a mechanism to invoke it by using the ARN. So you as a user come along and you attempt to invoke your Lambda function. Now behind the invocation is a load balancer that is automatically provisioned for you and handled by Lambda. This is completely invisible to you as a user. Now before your invocation can actually be routed to be processed, we need to talk about Lambda Services Reserve Pool, which is again completely hidden to you as a user. So this reserve pool is a fleet of machines that Lambda maintains such that when invocations come in, it can deploy your code to an EC2 machine and have it backed by your load balancer. So say an invocation comes in, Lambda will take a machine that's in the reserve pool and assign it to your load balancer. So that invocation will now be processed on that EC2 machine. And say for instance, let's assume that you get a sudden burst of requests or a burst of invocations, Lambda will take additional machines from that reserve pool and assign them to your load balancer. So now all of a sudden your Lambda is much more equipped to deal with concurrent invocations. And finally, after your invocations or your burst of traffic is over, Lambda may choose to remove those machines from your load balancer and put them back in the reserve pool so that they can be used by other customers. So a lot of these details are completely transparent to you as a customer. All you know is that you upload some code and you invoke it from a predefined endpoint. The complexity here is completely hidden from you and automatically handled. So that's a little bit about how Lambda functions work, at least internally. So now let's talk about why they're so popular and everyone seems to be using them. So it really comes down to one major point, which is that they integrate so well with other AWS services. So for example, you can host a Lambda function behind an API gateway to create REST APIs. 
Another option is that you can hook up S3 to your Lambda function such that whenever a file gets inserted, updated, or deleted, you can trigger your Lambda function to respond to that change and do some data processing within your Lambda function. Third, you can hook up SQS with Lambdas for message buffering and event processing in a pub sub environment. Similarly, you can use SNS to Lambda for message processing. In addition, you can use step functions integrated with Lambda for complex workflow orchestration. And finally, you can use DynamoDB triggers combined with Lambda for change detection. So whenever an insert, update, or delete occurs on your Dynamo table, you can invoke your Lambda function to perform some kind of data processing or change detection processing on that row. So I do want to point out that each of these integrations is just a couple clicks away in the AWS console. And this is part of the reason why I believe they're so popular. Setting this stuff up is just so darn easy. And the functionality you can achieve through the combination of many of these integrations allows you to build some very complex workflows. So this is the main reason that I believe Lambdas are so popular. Combine that with the fact that they're so easy, everyone seems to be using them. Now let's talk about some newish features as of the past few years. The first one is Lambda Edge. Now Lambda Edge allows you to easily deploy your Lambda functions to multiple regions across the globe. This ensures low latency for your customers, no matter where they're accessing your application from. Secondly, there's Lambda Destinations, which was recently announced in reInvent last year, and that allows you to pipe your Lambda functions output directly into other AWS services, such as SNS or SQS. This is in contrast to you having to manually write the code within your Lambda function to publish to these services. Third, there's Lambda layers, which allow you to easily include reusable libraries into your Lambda function so that those libraries can be shared across multiple Lambda applications. And finally, there's provision concurrency, which was also announced in reInvent last year and allows you to make your application more highly available and less likely to receive latency spikes during the first few invocations, which is also known as the cold start problem. So if you like this video, I have a ton more on Lambdas on my channel, including tutorial walkthroughs and overviews. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.